Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to make a tilt shift plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. And that's going to make some of your aerial shots look like they've been shot in miniature. Please give us a like and a subscribe, maybe hit the bell. And if you'd like to comment below, that'd be even better. Although people tend to think of tilt shift now as making uh, photos or video look like miniatures, it's actually a photography technique and special lenses were developed that shifted or tilted so that you could shoot buildings without the top of the buildings look as if they were going to fall over backwards or converge. And here you can see this is actually a shift lens on a Nikon and here we have a tilt lens on a Nikon. And what they both do is they move the plane of focus away from the plane of focus of the film and that gives the selective focus and it's actually called something I hope I pronounce this right called the Schimflug principle and this has all got some great maths in it. I'll leave both links in the description below but let's get on and build a plugin. We're going to start making the plugin right from scratch and here we've got motion open and if you haven't got motion we really suggest you buy it. It's $49. It means you can do a lot more build and alter effects that are made for Final Cut Pro 10. Now we're going to actually make a title. You could make this as an effect as well but a title gives you a bit more flexibility and that means you're going to drop that on top of the uh, video or the photos a bit like an adjustment layer. Um, up here we can see we're going to make it in 1080, that's 1080 lines or pixels that come from a TV background. Uh, doesn't really matter, um, it will upscale it to 4K automatically without any, um, any loss um, or sharpness on there. And it doesn't really matter what frames per second or the length because there are no temporal effects in this effect, which is a posh way of saying things happening in relation to time. So let's open up that. And here we have our blank title. First thing we want to do is get rid of this text here. Um, no reason for that. It's obviously a placeholder if you want to design um, text titles on there. Now, next, we're going to go and discover the filters and the blur filters in here. So if I navigate over to the inspector. Now, the one we want to concentrate on is the gradient blur, as that will give us the um, different levels of blur and also some nice on-screen control. So what I'm going to do is just drop that onto the group. As you can see, it gives us this kind of like diagonal blur on here, and that's not what we want because we want the blur to come from the top and the bottom. So let's have a look in the inspector. And in the inspector, you can see there are sets of XY points for both ends of the blur. Now I know that point two is actually the most blurred, so we need to put that on the top of the frame. Now, how do you get it on there? Well, we know that the frame is 1080 pixels high. So this Y point is actually going to be 540. That's 540 pixels up from the middle. And now that'll be bang on. And then move this one to about here, somewhere around there. And also, let's make this a nice figure on the X. So let's say about minus 500 for both of those. OK, that should be good. Uh, another thing we want to do is publish the OSC. Uh, by hitting that, it'll mean that these two XY points, the on-screen controls, will appear in Final Cut Pro 10. If you don't have that on, then they won't appear. Now, that's OK for the top bit of the blur. So let's actually rename this Top Blur. Now we want to do the same for the bottom. Now, I could just drag another instance on there, but what I'll do is actually duplicate this one and call that bottom blur. We need to change the XY on the blur on the bottom blur because it's actually set for the top blur because we duplicated it, so no problem. Now, one thing is make sure you're on the right instance. One of the things I do all the time is actually select the wrong one and I end up going too far and then have to do multiple undo. So here we are on the bottom blur and we know it's 540 up. So therefore, on the bottom one, it'll actually be minus 540. And that's put that bang onto that bottom line there. Now that's important. And we'll just drag this one down to somewhere around there. It doesn't really matter where. But then we need to alter the X on that. So that's going to be 500. And that's going to be 500 as well. So if I select them both, we've now got two blurs going from the bottom and the top into the middle, which are perfect. Those should give us the effect. And again, 
just to make sure both of these are published. Probably a good time to save. So I've actually got a category called tutorials and guess what I'm going to call it. No prizes for that one and hit publish. Now that will have published to Final Cut Pro 10 and in publishing it, these points will be um, visible on screen, but I won't have any controls in the inspector because there's nothing in there. So I can fix that by going into the back into the inspector, selecting the top blur and right clicking on the parameters and going publish and publish again. So that's the top blur and then the bottom blur, publish and publish. Now, if we look back at the published parameters, we can see we've got all four points and those four points will appear in the inspector in Final Cut Pro 10. But I want to publish something else and that's the amount. And we can see we've got two amounts here and there's a few ways of publishing these. We could just go kind of publish and publish both and have one for the top and one for the bottom. I want to be a bit more clever than that. What I could do is I could go into the library and pick up a behavior, parameter behavior link, drag that onto the group and then look in the inspector. Now you need to say what it's going to go from and to. So both of these filter blur, the blur filters are on this group. So drag that in. Then you need to say where it's going to first. And that's going to go to, um, we're going to use the top as the start. So it's going to go to the bottom blur amount. And then it's going to go from the top blur amount. Now, those two blur amounts should be linked together. A um, bit hard to prove it because in here we've just got this grey background. So what you'd do is you'd actually publish the top blur amount there. And then that will control both of them. Let's prove it by pumping this up to say something like 70 and then have a look at the bottom blur. There you go, 71, 71, both of them on there. Both of those are linked together. So that's a link behavior to tie those two together, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. So I'm going to take that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rig. So I'm actually going to publish this amount, both of these, add to rig, create new slider. So that's the top blur amount into there and also the bottom amount, which is this one. Add to rig, it's already there, add to slider. Now we'll call this blur amount. Now I just need to do some configuration in here. The range is zero to 100, that's fine. But these parameters here are way out there where I left them. So on 100, we need to say that's gonna be 100. And also the top amount. And then when I slide this back, they both need to be zero. So now when I slide this, you can see both of these sliders are going up and down. And we'll leave, I don't know, maybe something about 40 on there. Now, all I have to do is publish that. Publish. And that blur amount is there. That's the one left over from before. That's the top. You can see this. It means that's controlled. It's actually in a, in a, in a rig. So I want to unpublish that. And I'll do a bit of rearranging, put that up to the top there like that. Now, why have I used a rig when I could have used the link? I tend to use quite a lot of rigs because when you link stuff, if you want to put another instance of a blur in, you'd have to link it again to the top and it can get a bit confusing. So I always allow myself some space to be able to build a plugin. And by having a rig, you could actually have a whole stack of these all linked down here and they'd all work all tied up really nicely with that. So I think we're about ready to have a look at this plugin in Final Cut Pro 10. One more save, how about that? Here we are in Final Cut Pro 10 and I have a couple of clips on the timeline, a couple of helis. If you remember, we saved the tilt shift effect to a category called tutorials and here it is, the tilt shift effect and it gives you that kind of like nice preview when you go over it. Right, because it's a title, it means it's actually going to sit on top of the clip and not on it, if you understand the difference. You could make it as an effect and it would go on top, but for this we've done a title. So if I hit X on the keyboard, that's going to mark the in and out. And then I'm going to go Q and that drops the tilt shift effect 
on top of the video. And as you can see, we have the lines here for the controls, but let's open up the inspector, which is command four, and we'll turn the blur effect down. And as you can see, we've got that tilt shift effect. But what's great is we've got the controls here, so we can move this up and down like that, and this one up and down. You can do a diagonal tilt shift if you really want to. It's a really flexible way of doing it on there. And that's, you know, you can adjust this as much as you like to get that effect. And the same thing for this bridge shot. Maybe we just put the tilt at a slightly angle. On there and you can crank this up and down to your heart's content. So a really easy way of making a tilt shift plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. As you see there's lots of flexibility in there for great effects. Uh, we quite like some of the effects in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, the focus one's quite good so well worth having a play with that. There's got some great effects on that as well. So if you've got motion why not give it a go. It takes a few minutes to build something that's actually really quite useful and believe it or not people actually charge money for doing this and charge money for this type of plugin. Well I do as well because this makes up um, one of the plugins in the toolkit very very similar and we're just updating that toolkit that's going to be out in a week or so time with a lot of new stuff um, so watch out for that but for the meantime thanks very much as I said please like leave a comment uh, hit the bell that'd be great more tutorials coming very soon bye bye